Bought nothing into the world. And it is certain we can carry nothing out. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I said I will take heed to my way, that I sin not with my mouth. I will keep my mouth with a bridle while the wicked is before me. I was dumb with sorrow. I held my peace, even from good. And my sorrow was stirred. My heart was hot within me. While I was musing, the fire burned. Then spake I with my tongue, Lord, make me to know mine end and the measure of my days, what it is, that I may know how frail I am. Behold, thou hast made my days as a handbreadth, and mine age is as nothing before thee. Valley, valley. Every man in his best state is altogether vanity. Surely every man walketh in a vain show. Surely they are desquinning in pain. He heapeth up riches and knoweth not who shall gather them. And now, Lord, what wait I for? My hope is in thee. Deliver me from all of my transgressions and make me not the reproach of the foolish. I was dumb. I opened not my mouth because thou did it. Remove thy stroke away from me. I am consumed by the blow of thine hand. Thou with rebukes doest correct, correct men in their iniquity. Thou makest his beauty to consume away like a moth. Surely every man is vanity. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and give ear unto my cry. Hold not thy peace at my ears, for I am a stranger with thee, and a sojourner, as all my fathers were. O oh, spare me.
I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within our gates, O Jerusalem, as a city that is come back together. Now is the time when all true worship shall come together to worship him in spirit and in truth. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. Come on, come on, put your hands together. Come on, let's give God some praise now. Oh, you know how glory it was. You always had a good time. Come on, you can do better than that, can't you? Come on, can't you do better than that? Can somebody say praise the Lord? Can somebody say hallelujah? Come on, y'all sounding kind of dry. Now, this is a homegoing service, amen? And so we are here to celebrate Gloria's life, amen? And so the church has gathered, and we know what God has said, and we are here to do what God has called us to do. Will you bow your heads with us while we have that this occasion? Father God, we come before you right now in the precious and mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, we thank you for your blessings and for your mercy, for your kindness, and for your grace. I pray, Lord God, that you will wrap your loving arms around this family, around this daughter, around this son, and around this daughter-in-law, Lord God, and let them know, Father God, that you have not forgotten about them, Lord. Well, Father God, we thank you right now for what you're about to do in the spiritual realm, Lord. We know that you are able, Father God, and we know that, Lord God, you are too wise to make a mistake, Father God. So, we, Lord God, we thank you right now, and we praise you, and we worship your holy in righteous name. Amen and amen. At this time, we'll have a song. Come on, sing every praise, every praise is to our God. Every word of worship on a board. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing every praise, every praise is to our God. Every word of worship on a board. Every praise, every praise to our God. Sing hallelujah, hallelujah to our glory, hallelujah. Oh, it's to our God, every praise, every praise is to our God. Come on, sing for oh, every praise, every praise is to our every word of words. Come on, put your hands together, y'all. Like these two hands, but do like this. Do, do like this. Do, do like this. Do, do like that. There you go. Come on. There you go. Come on, sing, oh, every praise. 
That's the highest praise. Come on, put your hands together. Ah, uh, no, 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 no. I can't hear anything back here. Come on. Come on now. I tell you, I don't know about y'all today. Um, you know, I used to say everything dead need to be in the graveyard. And uh, we are here live and well. Amen. And I see my uncles out there. They're not clapping. Ain't nobody clapping. What's wrong with y'all? Amen. And, um, uh, you know, you, you ought to praise God. Amen. Yeah, maybe y'all are still in COVID mode or something like that. But not amen. But um, uh, you ought to praise God. The Bible says, let everything that have breath. Uh, I wish I had a witness. That this, 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 uh, I wish I could stand up with this a little bit. Isn't that right? Uh, but, yeah, yeah, give me something uh, Amen. But you all, you all, are, we, we want to praise God. And nobody ought to have to poke you and prod you. Praise God. I wish I had a witness in here. Now, now you know, Gloria was a lively person. Amen. Smile all the time. You know, even the last time I saw her, she was smiling. And she's a lively person. Isn't that right? That bit to cause you in this place and it says uh, it's a, but you, we are the church, right? I wish I had a witness. Does anybody in here belong to the church? I said, does anybody in here belong to the church? I tell you, the brother was, the brother was singing his heart out and trying to, trying to sing. Y'all looking like what in the world? I'm like, what? Where are we? Isn't that right? And so we 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 want to be alive, amen. This is a homegoing church, isn't that right? Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Look, look, this part is up, y'all. You know? As much as Lord went through, and now she's 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 home with the with the Lord. You ought to 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 put your hand together and tell her and tell her, thank you, Lord. That's what I'm talking about. I've been alive, isn't that right? And she was not born in any other kind of way, isn't that right? Now, I don't care whether you're Baptist, Presbyterian, every time, we all alone, all. We all alone, you're 
you right now. I say, I'm glad you had it because of the Lord. Ain't none of my husband waving their hand, but that ain't got none of y'all. Listen, you don't know the Lord. Wait, wait, wave your hand. Oh, Lord, 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 have mercy. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Ashamed of God? Don't be ashamed of God. Lift your hand and tell us thank you right now. Tell us thank you for another day. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. I'm telling you right now, we ought to be fired up for Jesus Christ. Good God Almighty. Ooh, Lord, have mercy. Please, I can't preach like that. Ooh, I can't preach no sermon, no dead people. There you go, brother. Here, put something on. All right, now we're going to have a scripture. Amen. Amen. Scripture. We have a scripture from the Old Testament. Melvin McCullough. Come on down. Y'all come on. Y'all see them got the program. And if you got on, if you're on the scripture, you ought to be coming on down. The next one after that. Who's the next one after that? Come on down. Dawkins. Who is it? Who, who, who is it? Who is it? Is it? Is it somebody? Come on up. Come on. Come on. Good evening. Before I read scripture, I want to say a few words about Gloria. The type of person she was. She was a kind, love hearted person. And Gloria and Charles was a couple that was made for each other. And I was told not to take too much time, but I want to say this. Uh, <clears throat> Kill to Kill and Anthony, when you go out there to that house, you can replace the windows, the doors, and everything, but you can't replace Charles and Glory. Oh, excuse me. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and read the script. So I can sit down. So what I want to read first, it might not be appropriate for this, but it's coming from Jeremiah, the 18th chapter, one down to about the 10th verse. So if you would write it down and read it when you get home, it's about God telling Jeremiah how he can change the nation. And you know if he can change the nation, he can change one person. And we just have to pray to him and stay faithful to his word, and he'll do it. And the last one coming from Second Chronicle 7 and 14. That's my favorite verse in the Bible. It's talking about the people, if my people. If the people would do what the word of God say do and what God say, tells us to do, we wouldn't be going through a whole lot of stuff in this country today. We wouldn't be going through a whole lot of things in our lives. We got to stay prayed up to God's word because he is the one to follow. And I pray to God every day for our youth because they really need it. Because the world out here has got a lot to offer and it's not good for them. So if y'all would read those two books when you go home. Second Chronicle 7, 14th verse, and read Jeremiah, the 18th chapter, verse 1 through 10. And I thank y'all. Amen. is good. Amen. Uh, next person here. Um, okay, come on. Good afternoon. Today I'll be reading Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 7. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, 
With thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Have a prayer of God. Let us bow our heads. Father, we come today seeking refuge. We stretch our hands to thee for no other help that we know. If thou would draw ourselves from thee, where shall we go? Lord, before we ask you for anything, we pause to tell you thank you for everything. Because even in times like these, we found it in the right of Thessalonians, he says, to give thanks not for everything, but in everything. So even in times like these, we have to pause to tell you thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Even in times like these, we have to pause to reflect on how good you've been to us. Lord, the truth is today is a heavy day. It seems as though we were just here a few months ago. And here we are again. But Father, you told us that you would not put no more on us than we could bear. But Lord, this cross is a little heavy. So Lord, we pray that you would allow your Shekinah glory and your spirit to undergird this family. Prop them up on every side. Build them up where they're weak. Strengthen them where they're torn down. Be a light in darkness. Be a ladder out of a dungeon. Be Google if they have a question. Be Wi-Fi when they feel disconnected. Lord, we pray today that you would get the glory some kind of way. For your word comforted us and told us that you shall supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory. Lord, there is a lot of things that we don't know. There is a lot of things that we do not know. But there is one thing that we know. Romans said, and for we know that all things work together for the good of them. So even in this, it's going to work out for our good. The life and the death, the good and the bad, the happy and the sad is going to somehow work out for our good. So, Father, we ask you that you would continue to bless this family, our children. In the name of Jesus, link them together like a chain that cannot be broken. We bind the hand of the enemy even now. For we know that the days ahead will be rough. But you told us that you would be right there by our side. So, Lord, we're going to need you. We call, we call on you because there's no other help that we know. Now, God, as, the, as we leave this place on today, it's going to be a rough night. It's going to be a rough week. It's going to be a rough holiday season. It's going to be rough years ahead. So, Lord, I pray, God, that you would allow them to understand that even after all the plates of chicken have stopped, after all the phone calls have stopped, that you would be right there to hold them in the hollow of your hand for her grandkids. Lord, as they grow up, God, cover them with your blood. Strengthen them. Let them grow up to be who you've called them to be. Father, we pray for everyone that she's touched down through the years. We pray for her extended family on today that you would help them to understand better by and by. Lord, we're going to need you. We're, we're submitting all things unto you. For there's no other help we know. God, we pray that some kind of way you get the glory. And we as your people will be found 
giving your name the glory, the honor, and the praise. This is our prayer, Lord, and we submit it under the name of the one who can still turn water into wine. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. At this time, we have another selection. Oh, Lord, I give you my soul. Oh, 
remarks by Rosalind Conwell and Alonzo Lumpkin and Nancy Mullen Dorothy Davis with the cards be on track okay but to God to be the glory um I do want to thank you for this opportunity to see a few things about my friend Gloria. Um, we met, and when I say we, Pat and Rose, we worked at Wendy's. We worked at the old Wendy's, and um, they tore down the old one, and they put a new one there off Cherry Road. But uh, whenever we would get together, we would have so much fun. We'd be cutting up a little bit, just just a little bit, just a little bit, laughing, talking for hours. It was it was a great time to share. Um, what a friend, a true friend uh, that she was to me in my life. It did, hmm? Sorry. It didn't matter if I didn't see her. 
a month, a year, 10 years down the road. It just didn't matter. She meant that much to me. But when we got back together, we never missed a beat. It was like we were never apart. It was so easy being around Gloria. My friend Gloria was strong-willed. She was independent. She didn't waste much time. She was straight to the point. And when she got mad, y'all need to leave the room, okay? Give her some space. <laughs> she got real quiet on you like, oh, okay, I'm going to go. I'm going to go, okay. <gasps> it's been years, but I was back in her life again. I go, yay. Um, marriage, children, grandchildren. Um, I was back. It was under different circumstances, but... Um, just spending time with, with Gloria was a blessing to me. We laughed, we talked, and we did a lot of praying. I saw, I'm so sorry. I had it together out there, okay. I saw how much she loved her family and how much her family loved her. She was an awesome lady. Um, when I said she was independent, she'd rather do it herself um, than for anybody else to do it for her. She felt real bad because she had to get help. <sighs> this was new to her. Mm. Um, she did good. She did good uh, letting us family help her in her time. You know, we were, we were there for her. Y'all were definitely there for her. Always learning about life. I was able to see Gloria in Greensboro again. We cried, we laughed, and we prayed. Um, I, I told her, and I heard uh, Elizabeth saying this yesterday, but um, I told her, I says, oh, man, when you get to heaven, I said, you're going to get Charles, and you're going to get Charles. I know you are. Oh, my God. She took her right hand. She went, Shh. She, I said, oh, okay, okay, yeah, you're going to get them good. I said, that's what she's going to do. She, I'm sure she's already done that already. Okay, back to you guys. Takia, Anthony, grandchildren, family. Um, her love for you was great. It was great, and I know that she instilled you to be independent, a problem solver, uh, living successfully. That's what she wanted for you. Um, she wanted the best for you. Please remember that. I know you will. And in your quiet time, when she comes across your mind, I want you to remember her love for you always. Um, I have scripture, it says Psalms 34, 18. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. The Lord will mend your heart. I know he will. Mend your heart, never to forget, to live on and maintain God is with you wherever you go. I love you and praying for you and family. Thank you. about the remarks, what I was going to say, and uh, there was a lot of things that came to my mind. I think that when I think back on my life, I think that the what I can say most and most importantly is community, that's the word that came to my mind. My own glory was very special to me. 
Um, she was definitely a big part of my upbringing. She was definitely a big part of my community. Uh, I just think back on a lot of the times that I had with her as well as Mama Jim and there was a time where um, I was very young. My grandma had told me, she said, don't go down from the trussle. And uh, I went up from the trussle. I, I knew I should have been down there. And uh, on the way back, I heard the truck coming down the road. The green pickup truck on Jim drove. Grandma just told me not to go down there. And I said, well, he probably ain't going to tell me. I got back to the yard, I couldn't step foot in the yard good and told him. Got a book. <laughs> yeah. There was another time where my Gloria, she when I was in high school, she um she came to talk to me. She had a talk with me. I didn't go to class one day. I just decided I just wasn't going to go to school. I stayed at the house. Figured I'd chill out a little bit. Class was what school was about over with. And uh, they called to the house and left a message on my grandma's machine. And uh, I didn't get to check the message before she did, so she she got the message. And after she gave me a good fussing, she called my Gloria. And uh, she said, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna come down and talk to you face to face. I'm coming down. I'm thinking, man, what's she gonna talk about? After she got through talking. I, I felt very bad. I, I would rather have had a beat. And uh, I knew thinking it there that the level of expectations that my community, which is a big part of who she was to me, the level of expectations that she had for me as well as her, her family, um, that's, that's where I'm coming from. She's very important. She had a big level of expectation for each and every one of us. She's going to be missed. She's going to be missed. Um, and I know that there's so many things that's going through through everybody's head right now. And at the end of the day, the main thing is we want to maintain a sense of community. We want to maintain a sense of family. We want to, we want to maintain a sense of who we are. Um, those are the things I can think of that mean the most to me. That's to me. I was able to, uh, she was able to help me when I was doing the, my boxing, my boxing events, all of them. She was there, she was cooking. She got, we got so good that I just had to give her the date. And it was on. Y'all know. So, and if anybody, if, if any one of y'all came to those events, you could see her in the back, she was kitchen, she was cooking. Everybody loved Angler's hot dog. We liked them, I liked them. Ain't too many other problems. So, She's going to be missed. Um, she's definitely going to be missed. Y'all know Kia has been. The community is still there. Um, she was. She was. She was raised. She loved fried peach pie. My grandma Thanksgiving would come around. Grandma would say, uh, "Go to the store and get those peach. Those are peaches." So Gloria loved those fried peach pie. Now, nobody else really cared a whole lot. But she like. I mean, like. But she liked them. And we were cooking, and my grandma would cook those fried peach pies, bang it for her. So she's going to be missed. Y'all, we, we still here for you. Um, if you need something, we're here. I'm, Charles has a big family. They there. We're all in here. Don't be scared. Don't be too proud to, to say what you need and mean what you say. Okay. I have a good one. Um, I met Gloria at, at church at Nazareth and I tell you, it didn't take anything. All I had to do was look at Gloria and I would just fall out. I mean, she would give me this eye or whatever. And we would know we would connect because we knew what we were laughing about. The three things we had in common the most was 
Her husband was Charles. My husband was Charles. She was a Panthers fan. I'm a Panthers fan. So I'm representing Gloria today in my Panthers jewelry. The third thing was both of our husbands, me and Charles, were deacons. And Gloria was kind of shy in a way. And on Fourth Sunday, if you know anything about Nazareth, Fourth Sunday was Communion Sunday. And our ex Gloria, you going up there today? Because we used to do this little circle thing where you take communion or whatever. And Gloria's like, I am not going up there. I'm not putting that little thing on my head. And, but if you go, I'll go. And we never would go, though. And I, after that, I was like, Gloria, you know, Carabelle, who was always over the deaconess, I said, Carabelle is going to kill us. And Carabelle would turn around and give us that eye. I mean, Gloria just looked the other way. But we used to have some good times just laughing about all kinds of just stuff that didn't even make sense. And the last, when I saw Gloria, right after Charles passed, she looked at me and I looked at her and she said, y'all, please don't forget about me. And I said, Gloria, I could never forget about you. So I was supposed to go see her and I ended up getting my car service. So I called Anthony and I said, Anthony, I'm not going to make it today. And so he said, well, I'll tell you what, whenever she feels like she wants to have company again, I'm going to give you a call. But shortly after that, she started going in and out the hospital. So I never did get to see Gloria at the end but she knew when i told her i would never forget her and i never will like rock making some notes too um glory and i go back a long way we joined nazareth as children attending sunday school vacation bible school revivals but I think our friendship actually blossomed during high school. Later, we, it was the Daveses, the Lumpkins, McCullers, and McNeil families. We took summer vacations together for several years, which allowed our bond to become stronger, along with our spouses and children getting to know each other as well. I don't know which one of us moved from their first house together as a couple, but Charles and Gloria started the running joke about moving so far out that when either, either of us would call the other on the landline, we couldn't hear, and that we needed to climb further up the pole to get a better connection, thereby communicating as they did in the 60s, that 60s show the Green Acres. Um, you had to hear it in Charles and Gloria's voice to get the full effect. <laughs> At our 40th class reunion back in 2017, Gloria arrived all dolled up, her makeup was what the young folks call beat to the gods. And she was the talk of the night at that reunion. And uh, actually in another two weeks, we will we'll be having another one. So she will be missed from there. My friend Gloria was funny, silly, corny, and serious. All rolled up into one sweet, genuine, and caring young lady. And that I'm going to miss. Makia, Anthony, Ashanti, and Grants. Gloria adored you all. There was something she wouldn't do for you, so you asked. I ask that you continue to grow that same love with each other. Thank you for this opportunity. Oh, you never felt me. 
opportunity to share the word of God um, and to talk about, you know, a eulogy is when you say something good about someone. And so it is not hard to find anything good to say about Gloria. But I do want to give us a foundational scripture there found in the 27th chapter of Matthew. <clears throat> if you have your Bibles with you. And so it says in the 27th chapter of Matthew and the 45th verse. Now from the sixth hour until the ninth hour, there was darkness over all the land. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lame sabbatane. This is that, my God, 
my God, why have you forsaken me? Will you bow your heads with us? Most gracious and kind Heavenly Father, we come before you in the precious and mighty name of Jesus Christ. And we thank you once again for another opportunity to stand before the people of God and proclaim your word. We pray, Father God, that you would uh, be with us as we stand and do what you have called us to do. Be with Father God, Lakia, and, and, and Anthony, Father God, as they go through this time of, of grieving, Father God, and the rest of the family as well. We thank you, Lord, for your grace, for your mercy, and for your kindness. Amen. I want to talk about today, the title of the sermon or is, If You Focus On... The why, you'll never know how to live in the now. If you focus on the why, the whys in life, you will never know how to live in the now. Amen? I am not saying that you can't ask a question from God. Because if you want to look at Gloria and Charles as a unit, they were in church, they raised their children to know God. Um, I was trying to remember uh, speaking with my wife, if I heard, ever heard Charles say a bad word, you know those bad words that we can say sometimes, don't you? No, none of you never said anything like that. Uh, it's called cursing. Uh, I never heard him say anything bad, actually. Never heard him say anything, no bad words. You have, you live with him, you say, I have, I heard him say some bad stuff. But in terms of just being that with Gloria was a person that um, was always kind of silly. She, she could always make some faces at Charles. You know, when they were well, what not, she would just make cross her eyes and make a, a, a face, and you say, all right, Gloria. And, and you know, they were always funny together. Uh, and... Gloria and Charles was just that I was the best man at the wedding and, and looking at I was visiting her. Uh, my wife and I were visiting her in Greensboro and and, and she was just looking at me and she said, um, you look like Charles. I said, I've never, anybody ever said that to me. Charles probably would say, no, my eyes not that big. What now, you know. <laughs> but, but she wanted so much to be with Charles. And her heart was broken. The Bible say when two come together as one, it's a great mystery. And I don't know if whether or not God saw that she was not going to do very well without Charles. And, you know, it's always easy to love those who are far away from us. But then we, we are close to somebody and we see them every day. It's a different thing. But... You, you, I can't all, I, I really can't even do this eulogy without talking about one or the other because they went together like milk and cornflakes. You know, they, they all, they, 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 like, like, like water and Kool Aid. You know, they, they, and, and they, they always went together. So you really can't say something about one without saying something about the other because they were so close. Amen. Um, if you were to write a love um, story about Charles and Gloria, I believe that it would sell. So you all better move before I move and get in touch with Tyler Perry and tell him, you know, you need to, you need to, you need to deal with this one. But now let's, let's call it Charles and Gloria or something. Because it was the greatest love story that I've, one of the greatest love stories that I've ever seen in terms of a husband and wife. And, and, and the legacy, the legacy 
that they leave behind. Not so much what they left in terms of the material things that it it God left and blessed you with that. But the legacy of loving one another, of, of caring for one another, of, of being with one another, and, 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 and that is the thing, that is the legacy that they leave behind. I was sitting with Gloria one day in the house um, and, and she looked around the house. So you say, you know what, Lambert? I said, what, Gloria? Because you know she said my name with all syllables, whatnot. You know what, Lambert? I said, what, Gloria? At the end of the day, all of this matters to nothing. It doesn't really matter at the end of the day. And so it makes no difference how much you acquire. It makes no difference how much you own. At the end of the day, we brought nothing into this world. And it is certain that we're not going to carry anything out. Now, I don't mean go and do wrong and squander what God has blessed them to be able to leave you. And that is a legacy that they leave behind and you build on the legacy. So you leave the next generation something. But but Charles and Gloria were always willing to share what they had. Amen. I remember when I first got a job at on, on South Boulevard at Package Product and I was working and Charles had a Red River era. And he was crazy about that Red River era. But he let me drive it to work. And he told me, when you leave and go, you go to work and you come back home. I remember when he bought the children home. I remember when, when the Kia came. And I remember when Anthony came. I was there. And, and, and when they, they, they brought him into the house and how they loved him and cared for him and, 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 and was there for him. But they were always family. But I'm not saying that you can't ask a question why, because all of us are asking the question, if you try to live your life as best you can live your life, why do things, why in the scripture, I mean the book, I read a book, of why do bad things happen to good people? The question sticks in our mind. Why in their 60s, why did, did, did this happen to Charles and Gloria? Why somebody, why something else didn't happen? And all of us this room, uh, and, and, and it's filled up with people who have gone through some trouble and trials. Amen? My uncle got up and he talked and he read the scripture and his daughter is here now who some years ago had to bury two boys at one time. My brother Jerome lost his daughter, Kendra, and they are acquainted with death, acquainted with sorrow, acquainted with pain. And then you want to be able to hang around somebody that can say, I know what you're talking about. And I remember when my son had the heart attack and he's not seen very well now. And there was a minister, Reverend Wilson, came to the hospital and, he was, and I was kind of down. He said, you know what, preacher, you got to begin to believe in the God that you preach about. Now, you know, you, you got to have somebody that will tell you the truth about life. Because life is not always, it's, it's full of, of crosses to bear. Amen? And sometimes it, 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 it puts you on the wonder, to wonder why. Why has this happened? Why did my father pass and five months later my dad pass? Why? But if you focus on the why. You can never live in the now. And that is what, that's what counts. You live in the now. And so I'm not saying you can ask the question. The question why, I am not saying that you can't say, uh, uh, stay focused on, on, on the why sometimes, but you can't stay focused all the time. You've got to leave the why alone and you've got to live in the now. Because if you focus on the why, if you always focus on, I made a bad mistake, I, I, I made a bad turn, I, I, I did this wrong, I, 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 I did that. You, you, if you focus on that, you will never be able to live in the now. What you have to learn how to do is you got to learn how to smile again. You got to learn how to look at, 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 at the program and you say you got to smile and see Gloria. Because the last time I, my wife and I went to see Gloria, 
And, and I say, I want you to do something. Can you do something before I leave? She said, I'll, I'll do it if I can. Um, uh, you know, she, she you know, couldn't talk, but she, she you know, motioned. I, I say, would you smile? She just, just, just smile. She had been crying. I said, just take a moment and smile. And she smiled. And as we begin to pray, and I'm praying that God would heal her body. And I asked her what she wanted me to pray for because I think sometimes we, we ask people, tell me, well, pray for you. Well, what do you want me to pray? I want to be healed. I want my body to be healed. And we get to pray, and I laid hands, and I very seldom do that. I lay hands on her and pray with her and, and, and things of that sort. And, 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 she, and she began to lift her hands. And that's why I'm saying that when you are, when you are able and when you are strong enough, to say thank you, God. I worship you and I praise you. I, I, I don't think that because one day it's going to come a time when you're not able to do so. One, one day it's, it's going to come a time when you're going to say, I want to praise God. I'm going to lift my hands. Now, praising God is not all about the antics on the outside. It's about living for God and living your life for God. Amen? That, that's how you really praise God. But the Bible says, let everything that have breath Praise the Lord. I, 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 I wish I knew somebody in here that had breath to say, I want to just praise him right now. Because if Gloria can lay on her sick bed and have a trach in her throat and can't talk, and I said, baby, praise God, and she lift up her hands and begin to praise God, you ought to be able to say, thank you, Lord. I want to praise you. But but why? why? There, there are some lies in the Bible. Moses and Exodus 5, 22 said, Moses, so, so Moses returned to, uh, to the Lord and said, Lord, why have you brought trouble on this people? And why is it you have sent me? It's too wide. Why have you brought some trouble? And why you sent me? But I heard the songwriter say that trouble don't last always. I wish I had a witness in here. So, so here we understand and, and that, that Moses had some wives because, because God had moved and then God is said in the next verse, say, so you wait, I'll deal with, Mo, with, with Pharaoh. And, that, and you know, that, that may be some Pharaohs in your life that won't let you go. That, that, that may be some Pharaohs that holding on to your finances, some Pharaohs that holding on to your health, that some Pharaohs that holding on to your children. But, but you know what? I, I serve a God that will tell Pharaoh, let my people go. And do I have a witness in here? That, but, but why? Why? All of us have wives. Gideon. Gideon said to him, oh Lord, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? Isn't that, isn't that something new? If the Lord is with us, God wakes us up every morning. If God watches, keeps his eye on the sparrow and watches over me, if God, if God watches, then why did God allow this to happen? You know, sometimes God gets the best out of us when the worst things happen to us. Amen. A lot of us really wouldn't pray. Amen. If, if, if everything was going all right. But, 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 but every now and then when things happen, the Bible says, I, 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 trust God and, and, and trust, lean not to your own understanding, but in all of your ways, trust the Lord. And sometimes we don't trust him all the time, do we? When enough bad things happen in your life, here and Anthony, you had to grow up pretty quick to deal with this thing called death because sometimes we lose our parents and and and, and it's later on in life where we've lived a little bit and they live a little bit of force, whatnot, and, and, and we, we, we lose them because, because that's going to happen to all of us. There's nobody here unless the rapture happens that's going to get out of this thing alive. Amen? Every one of us are going to have to be in this position. Amen? And 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 so and so we understand that and and, and Gideon asked the question. Now, the, the, the angel of the Lord did not say that he was he was with it was with Israel and, and and at this time he he was with Gideon. He said, I'm 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 not with Israel because Israel has sinned, but I'm with you. So the Lord is always with us. 
but there are times when God would turn his back and let us deal with some things that we have to deal with. Amen? We all know when God is giving us a whooping, don't we? We, we all know when we've done wrong and, and, and God is chastising us. For the Bible says if, 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 if a father does not chastise his child, doesn't love him, whatnot. So when, when God chastises us, it means that God loves us. This man is um, talking about God not being with him, but God never leaves us. He promised he would never leave nor forsake. Ruth said, asked, had a question. Say, I, 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 I won't, I, I won't uh, all out of all of this. And, and Ruth came home and 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 began to deal with the situation of coming home. And 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 Naomi came with her whatnot. And, and Ruth and Naomi came in and. And, and Naomi had a husband, and he had she had two sons, and the husband died, then the two sons claimed, oh, died, and then she came home to Bethlehem. The word Bethlehem means house of bread. And she came home, and they said, Naomi, is this Naomi? And she said, don't call me Naomi. Call me Mara, because the Lord has dealt bitterly with me. What should have been a good homecoming was a bad homecoming. But let me tell you right now, there are some secret things. There are some things that God does not allow us to peer into. There are some, and, and those are the whys in our lives. Why did I get this disease? Why did this happen to my parents? Why did this happen to my child? Why did I lose this job? Why, why, why? And all of us have it. I, you know, coming up, uh, we were always taught, don't ever ask God why. But as I read my Bible, it's always, it's all right to ask God, why? Now you say, well, that doesn't sound right to me, but you never get an answer unless you ask, right? You've got to ask the question, why, why, why is God doing this? What is God saying? But here, as we look at the scripture, it says, now from the sixth hour until the ninth hour, there was darkness over all the land. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice. And I ask you a question, has ever, anything ever caused you to cry out? with a loud voice? Has anything ever been so heavy on you that the only thing you could do is to cry out to God? Has everything, any, any, anything ever happened to you that, 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 that causes you to say, God, I, I need you to help me because there's nobody else that can help me. Have you ever been in that situation, you know, sitting, at, sitting there and, uh, with my son in, in, in the room and he's in a coma, you don't know what's going on. You don't know what's happening. Your mother was sick and you would stop by as you were driving the truck and you would stop in to see her and you would get back in the truck and begin to drive home, Anthony, and wondering what's going to happen is if we're going to get a phone call and the phone may ring late at night. You pick up the phone and the kid, you, you, you're you calling her trying to make sure she's all right, wondering if, 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 if I can bring her back home and take care of her and make sure that she's all right and take care of mama and, and you're concerned about all of these things. And you stop to ask the question, well, she took care of her husband all of these years and even before her husband died, she finds out that she's sick. Why? The text says it was darkness. While Jesus was hanging there on the cross, there was, a ne there was never an answer to Jesus when he cried out. And he cried out, Eli, Eli, lame, sabachthani, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Now, 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 we would have said, with Jesus crying out, surely God going to answer him. Uh, Jesus, Jesus, God is going to say, Jesus, I'm going to resurrect you, but no answer. There are some times in our life when there is no answer to the question. 
What we have to do is to keep living because if we focus on the why, we will never learn how to live in the now. If my cousin never, if, he, if they focus on the why, we lost two sons at the same time, they will never be able to smile now. They will never be able to con console, console me in my time of need. And, and that's what happens. That's, that's life. That's Jesus said you, was, you have to bear your cross. This is a cross. You know, there are some things that we can get out of. We can get out pretty quick, right? We got a job, and the job is not going well. We can go into the boss and say, listen, I'm quitting today. I'm, I'm done. Isn't that right? Amen? If you got a car and the car is not running right, you can get out of it. You can go say, hey, look, I want to trade this car in. I want to get something else. Isn't that right? If some relationship is going bad, you can say, hey, I don't want to be your friend no more. I'm gone. Isn't that right? But there are some things that stick with us. There's some things that we can't get out of. Isn't that right? There, there are some things that we can't take off like we're taking off our coat. There are some things that, that when you wake up in the morning, it's there. When you go to bed, it's there. When you take a shower, it's there. When you go to work, it's there. When you eat, it's there. That, that thing is there all the time. But listen, resurrection is coming. Resurrection has happened. Listen, what you see, see glory now, wait, 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 let, me, let me tell you this. If you were to see Gloria now in her glorified body, you would be tempted to get on your knees and worship her. Y'all didn't hear that, did you? If you saw her in her glorified body now, you would be tempted to get on your knees and worship her. That's how glorified, because when Jesus was resurrected, he was resurrected and he had a glorified body. Amen? Now, 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 this is the thing, because I had to deal with the children and I'm done. And I know all of us have watched Matrix on TV, right? Y'all know about Matrix, right? And 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 Neil was the was the main character that had to be had to be had to be convinced that he was the one. And 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 Neil had to keep telling him, no, you wonder, I don't know about this. But you know what? When Jesus came on the scene. You never had to tell Jesus who he was. Jesus knew who he was. I am that I am. Isn't that right? I am the way. So you, Jesus knew exactly who he was. Now, 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 people were trying to draw a strong parallel between the matrix and Jesus, but they no match. Because Jesus, when he was glorified and had it glorified, the Bible says, the Bible says, when we see him, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Now, later on, Neil finds out who he is. And they're fighting in the hallway. Remember? They were fighting in the hallway, whatnot. And, and, and the guy starts shooting bullets, and the bullets start coming. And Neil just holds up his hand, whatnot. Picks one of the bullets out and drops it down. And all the rest of the bullets drop down. And they'll hold the camera to Jesus. The Bible says one day they were having a meeting, and Thomas was not there when Jesus came. And the Bible says that when Jesus came, the Bible said Jesus walked through the door. Huh? And Thomas said, if I, I, unless I see him and touch him and put my hands in his side, I will never believe in it. But Jesus came walking through the door. Amen? Now, if you know anything about science, matter is anything that encompasses space or time. This ain't too deep for y'all, is it? Matter is anything that in, that in, that in, in, in space is a, a space or time. That's matter. Matter. This is matter. This book is matter. Now, if I took my hand and I could stick my hand through this book, you probably all would get up and run, right? You're like, you know, something like, something ain't right with him. Isn't that right? If I could just walk through this desk here and, and you would like, man, something ain't right. Isn't that right? But Jesus walked through the door and told him to handle me. Now, not touch me, isn't that right? So y'all ain't getting this because the same body that Jesus has, Jesus has, is the same body that Gloria has right now. Now watch this. Later on, later on, Neil takes off at the end of the movie and he flies off. He takes off through the air or whatnot and he flies off and he's up in the air. But you know what? I believe that when Gloria got there, Charles said, you know what, I've been here for a little while. 
Let me show you something. And I can see Tom take off in the middle of the ass and look at his hip. And God said, I wonder if I can do that. And she takes off to her in the middle of the air. That, that's the kind of body that we're going to have. Now, now, I know some of y'all, y'all came here to stay, didn't you? You know, I got up this uh, yesterday and I put on my, put my just for men in. I put my just for men in, you know. And they got the kind of stuff, you know, you put on your mustache, I put some on my mustache. <laughs> And, and 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 you know you can still still look great there whatnot you know but I fixed the side I put a look just for me in there and I and I and I combed the side back and cut it back you know and kind of fixed it up you know a little bit there so I can look pretty good and whatnot but everything is great. He said, "Why he, he, he telling us all of his secrets whatnot you know well, well you know I was sitting in the room with a couple of preachers whatnot and all of them was with the head the hair was hair was black whatnot I said why are y'all there he said just for me and Reverend just for me. Just for me, brother. Just for me. See, he don't need none right now. Uh, yeah, but after a while, in the morning, if you follow your daddy's footsteps, you might not have none or whatnot. But you know what? But you know what? The, what? What am I saying? I know that that next year I'll be turning sixty years old. The Bible says, "Teach us to number our days, that we might know the end thereof." Those days are numbered, and and Charles and Gloria. Their days were numbered. Our days are numbered. So you better what? You better learn how to laugh. You better learn how to smile. Because there's some hard times that go come again. Isn't that right? But but Jesus, Jesus it, 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 it has given us this glorified body. This body that won't grow old anymore. This body that don't don't need just for men anymore. This body that won't need glasses anymore. This this body that they won't have to put on any any false teeth. This body that won't have to be ain't that right. This, you won't have to buy you no hair when you get over there with Jesus. But well, now you got to go back to the hair store. After that hair, man, I'll get you some more hair. Isn't that right? Gloria, you ain't got to get Gloria no more hair. Her hair is beautiful. And, 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 and you're not, when Charles, oh, my goodness. And, and you know what? She understood. She understood. I'm done now. She missed Charles so much. She said, well, he was mine. She told my wife he, he was mine. He said, she said, I, I know that we won't be married because the Bible says there will be no marrying. No giving in marriage in heaven. So now if you had a husband that you like down here, he won't be nobody else's up there and it won't be yours either. <laughs> if you had one you didn't like down here, you ain't have to worry about marrying him because there ain't going to be no marriage. Amen? <laughs> You'd be free as a bird. Isn't that right? And so, and so, and so, that is, that is the, the thing about it. If you focus here and answer. If you focus on the why, you will never know how to live in the now. She told you, Pia, that last time you talked to her, I'll see you in the morning. That's significant. There was a man that had three children. Two girls and a boy. And on his deathbed, he told the girl, I love you, and I'll see you in the morning. He told the next girl, I love you, and I'll see you in the morning. But he had a son. He told the son, I love you, but I won't see you in the morning. Because his son never received Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. So I love you. But I won't see you in the morning. That boy stood over that grave crying and weeping over his father's grave. And he, he just he's weeping and crying. But before he left that grave, he said, Lord, I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Because I want to see my father in the morning. And let me tell you right now, she left, he, she left the message. Before that, I love you, 
and I see you in the morning. Or she was telling the truth, I love you, and I see you in the morning. And that morning will come one day, and one day we're going to have a good time. There's going to be a great family reunion over there. There'll be no more dying. There'll be no more crying. There'll be no more weeping. Every day will be like Sunday and the Sabbath. will have no end. That's all I got to say to you. You know, I told Glory, I said, Lamb, I want you to do that. I said, I said, Lord, I want to sit out there with the family. He said, well, you're the only pastor I got. And I said, well, I said, I guess I'll do it then if you want me to do it. But she loved you so much. And she'll see you in the morning. In the morning, she'll see you. That is just a shell. That's all it is. I'm done. The most important part of glory is gone. It's gone. And she is better now. Actually, we got some, some more trouble. Got some more problems and some more trials. Because Gloria is being cremated, we are going to do the committal here. Amen. Man that is born of a woman hath but a short time to live and is full of misery. He heapeth up and is cut down like a flower. He flees as it were a shadow and never continueth in one state. In the midst of life, we are in death, of whom may we seek for score. But of thee, O Lord, who for our sins are justly displeased. Yet, O Lord, God, most holy God, O Lord, most mighty, O holy and most merciful Savior, deliver us not into the bitter pains of eternal death. Thou knowest, Lord, the secrets of our hearts. Shut not thy merciful ears to our prayers, but spare us, Lord, most holy, O God, most mighty, O holy and merciful Savior. Thou most worthy judge, eternal. Suffer us not at any last hour for any pains of death to fall from thee. But as much as it please Almighty God in his wise providence to take out of the world the soul of the departed, we therefore commit her body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, looking for the general resurrection in the last day and the life of the world to come through our Lord Jesus Christ at whose second coming in his glorious majesty to judge the world, the earth, and sea shall give up their dead and the corruptible bodies of those who sleep in him shall be changed and made like unto his own glorious body according to the mighty working whereby he is able to subdue all things unto himself. I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, right from henceforth, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Even so, saith the Spirit, for they shall rest from their labor. Let us all repeat the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen now the grace of the lord jesus christ 
and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be among each and every one of you. And all of the saints of God say amen, 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 and amen. Are you all leaving now? Okay, well, the family will receive.